Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Shadow's third Sunday worship service. It feels good to actually see people in here. Last time I was standing up here, there was only five of us in here, so it feels good to see people in here worshiping God, and I'm just thankful for that. On that note, let us have prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for another day, Lord. Lord, thank you for blessing us to wake up this morning with the with the with the encouragement, Lord, to just to come and praise your name today, Lord. We just want to thank you, Lord, because somebody didn't wake up this morning, Lord. We just want to say thank you right now, Lord. Because somebody's lying in a hospital bed right now, Lord. But we in a warm comfort of the church right now. We just want to say thank you right now, Lord. Just continue to bless us and watch over us, Lord. Lord, continue to bless this program right now, Lord, as we as we describe to just give you all the glory and the honor that you deserve right now, Lord. Just thank you for blessing us, Lord, for our families right now, Lord. Just just thank you for blessing us just to be able to just just press just press and push our way through this epidemic right now, Lord. There's so many people that's affected right now, Lord, but we know that you're in control right now, Lord. So we know that our hope belongs to, to you, Lord. We just give you all the glory and the honor today, Lord, because without you, we have nothing, Lord. That's why I just want to say thank you, Lord, right now, Lord. Let's continue to watch over our kids right now, Lord, as they as they make it through the summer, Lord. This is the worst time of the year for kids to be out of school right now, Lord. Just continue to just watch over them and comfort them right now, Lord. Just continue to strengthen us, Lord, and just help us to go and just do your will, Lord, so, so that you be glorified in all things that we do, Lord. Lord, just continue to watch over all the bereaved families right now, Lord. Just touch and heal them right now, Lord. Just continue to bless each and every one in, in the shallow church, Lord. Bless all the sick and shut in the hospitals right now, Lord. Just continue to watch over us and keep us safe, Lord. All these blessings we ask against Son Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Okay, our scripture today is going to be coming from uh, the book of Psalms, 100th chapter. Verse 1 through 5. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye hands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is good. Know ye that the Lord is good. Yes, Lord. It is he that hath made us, not ourselves. We are his people and his sheep in the pasture. Enter, in, enter into his gates of thanksgiving and give his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy everlasting, his truth endures forever. Amen. God's word is written.
Amen. My God. What a worship. Yeah. Worship. And she said to me and that 
uh, uh, by way of uh, email, she said, you know, there are some other people that's going through the same thing, or, or experienced the same thing, or will experience losing, uh, 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 having a baby to pass while still in their mother's womb. And so, and she wants them to know that they are not alone. And, 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 and you know, in, 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 in an experience like that, you can feel all alone. Even, you know, we, we, we go through those experiences and we, we ask ourselves the question, where is God? And so when, when, when you can't feel the presence of God, my God, what, what a loneliness. What a loneliness. But it's a natural experience. And so pray for her. Uh, we will be baptizing uh, next Sunday. And I'm not asking anybody to help me. I understand that, um, you know, that, that, that might not be uh, prudent uh, during these times. But... It is a part of my pastoral call, uh, and I'm excited about uh, baptizing. And so I'll be, we'll be baptizing next week. I think we have three. I think uh, Minister McDean said he had two uh, youth. And then we had one adult, amen, uh, from last week. And so I'm okay. I think I can handle it. Amen. I, I do push-ups. <laughs> Amen. I do. I might, I might look weak, but I'm. And so, um, and then, and then, uh, at the end of the service, uh, uh, we we are asking those that are watching us, uh, Facebook Live, that if you have not filled out your census information, uh, uh, persons will be uh, in the alley in the back of shallow. You could come through, and, and they could help you fill that out. You have to stay in your car, but, and they'll have gloves and everything on, and, and they want to help you fill out the census. Now, this, what makes the census important is, is that if we don't uh, fill out the census, then the community that we stay in get the, get the short end of the stick. So when it comes down to the federal government giving money to certain communities, if we don't fill out the census, then our community will not be uh, when I get dollars to help and sustain itself. So, so they'll be doing that right after the service uh, uh, for the next few hours. So please do that. And then uh, 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 next Sunday, this Sunday, next Sunday would be our church anniversary. And so naturally, we canceled all the annual services for this year. Uh, God give us a liberty for that, thank God. He just don't give us too much liberty when it comes down to the Sabbath. Uh, but, but what I want to do is I want to ask y'all for a favor. Um, in, in, in honor of our 67 years of doing ministry here on the hilltop. Uh, uh, there is an organization called the Elizabeth Wesley Merit, Youth Merit Incentive Award. And, uh, and this is the best thing since Kool-Aid for our babies in the city of Tacoma. And the Elizabeth Wesley program gives incentives for youth to stay in school. And so, so they're celebrating 25 years. And so they, um, uh, they have spent over a million dollars on our babies. And so and, and instead of, um, so what I would like for us to do is I need every member to donate $67 for the church anniversary that will be given to help celebrate 25 years of the Elizabeth Wesley Youth Merit Incentive Award. If you don't have it, give what you can. And we're asking that you, you, you bring it through, send it through the church 
so that uh, Sister Marsha and Sister Ray could keep up with it. And, and so that I would, your name would be in the uh, program. And, and, and so I need a minimum of 100 people. I'm going to ask our Facebook followers uh, that if you would like to donate to the Elizabeth Wesley uh, Youth Merit Incentive Awards, you know, please uh, send a check to the Shadow Church. We'll make sure that they get it, you get a receipt, and your name also will be printed in the uh, programs. So, so we're saying, or uh, everybody's saying, or uh, almost everybody's saying, Black Lives Matter. But when it come down to putting our money where our mouths are at, when it come down to investing in our communities, investing in our babies, then, you know, we don't want to give. We don't want to do anything. We still looking for the white man to do everything for us, and then we get mad when, when Caucasians are the only somebody making the, the decisions. Help me somebody. I, I'm not, I, I, love, I love them, but I'm not looking for them to be Superman for our children. I'm Superman. Brother, brother, uh, Jerome. Jerome Superman. Brother, Deacon, Elmo Superman. Dr. Allison Barbara Simpson slash slash is Superwoman. We are our children heroes. And so, so, so the event is in September. So we got until now, until the first week of September, to come up with $67. And so, so if you've been giving more than that to the Elizabeth Wesley, then, then your $67 is, is, will be a sacrificial offering. Because Bone and I, by the grace of God, we've been giving $500. Uh, and so we'll give $500 this year, but we're still going to give our $67. We're still going to give it, because we would have gave it anyway. We would have gave it anyway. And so we asked um, us to do that. Um, I was speaking for today really does not need any uh, introduction. Uh, oh, let me say this. Thank you for those that came out to help us celebrate the life of Barry Banks, our daughter, our twin daughter that passed. Uh, thank you so much. He was so grateful. His family was so grateful. Uh, those that, that press their way to help out. You know, and, and, I, and I just want some, some of us to think about this. If it was your child, how important would the pandemic be to you if it was your child and you wanted to have a service for your child? Just think about that. Okay, and so I would, I would speak ahead, really doesn't need an invitation. Uh, he's the, uh, uh, one of the sons of the Shallow Church. It's very appropriate that he would be here today. Uh, uh, he's, he's really, he's a man of God. He's, he's my pastor. He's my friend. Uh, he's my brother. Uh, he's a confidant. Uh, it's a long passion. It's a lonely life. But, you know, I could, I could talk to him about stuff and, and don't have to worry about you know, it circulating around the city. He has, he has, he has really been a mentor and a help uh, to me as, as I try to uh, do the work of God. Uh, he's the proud pastor of the Eastside Baptist Church. Uh, retiring within the next few months. Uh, uh, he's married to uh, Sister Jacqueline Banks and they're real close to uh, 50 years, I think 46 or 47 years that uh that uh jackie has put up with him and, and we need to pray for jackie can we give jackie a hand praise for him? <laughs> amen amen and so they have been uh just just very instrumental in in, in, in my life and in the life of bone and so he would he would be our speaker he's also the president of political destiny so we know that the ballots went out but political destiny is going to put out an advisory ballot. So, so don't vote now, because you don't know all those people. If you know all those people, 
then go ahead and do your thing. But if not, wait. And, and next week, uh, uh, you'll be able to go on Political Destiny website and there will be an advisory ballot. Amen. So, so there, it's so congested that if you if you didn't take the time to study the pamphlet, uh, uh, the Black Collective and Political Destiny did. So, so God bless you, and 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 we're gonna ask my pastor to come at this time. Can we give God a hand, praise for Him? <laughs>
and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I began to wonder why we began to realize last year, about mid last year and the beginning of this year, everybody wanted this verse on something that they had. For I know the plans I have for you, declared the Lord, the plans to prosper you and not to harm you, the plans to give you hope and a future. And then after this pandemic hit, it began to make a lot of sense for me because then I took time to read above that verse in the first 11, I mean first 10 verses. And in that text, we find that the Babylonians were in exile, or going into exile. And it was about 597 BC that the Judean king, Jehoiakim, uh, was deported along with most of the leading citizens uh, of Jerusalem. And a few years later, went back and we got the remainder. Jerusalem, massive walls and beautiful temple, was left in shambles leaving the people in shock and disbelief, anguish, with the, ever a hope of recovery. But from our text, it includes a letter of hope, a message of hope, a message of optimism, a message of expectation, a, a message of reassurance, and a message of recur encouragement, a message intended to strengthen people in a season of weakness and challenge. It is intended to give them a promise of divine intervention. This letter was written at a time of captivity, a time of suffering, a time of despondency and despair, as well as a time of futuristic uncertainty because of the false illusions from false prophets. Much like today, there are individuals who sought the popularity and praise of the people who thus told people what they wanted to hear. You know, everything that's going to happen and during, happening during this pandemic is not going to bring you joy, but there is some sorrow. All right. While the true prophets of Israel warned that there was destruction may be ahead and the disobedience and the false prophets of the people an alternative sermon of hope. Well. False hope, but hope. According, according to the opening verse in chapter 28, chapter 28, one of one by the name of Hananiah went as far as to predict that in the name of the Lord well, that the captive will return within a period of two years. Mm. A period of two years, oh. causing God to send forth a true prophet, Jeremiah, to rebuke him and causing him. For, for punishing him for causing people to put the false trust in him. Right. Everybody that somebody and everybody that wants to be somebody during that day would always say in the name of the Lord. Well. A lot of times we, we want to validate what we're saying. We'll say the Lord told me. Right. Sometimes even the pastor would come to you and say the Lord told me to tell you. Amen. Yeah, we, 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 it, it is true. And then we try not to use it falsely. The lesson to the congregation must be because the word said, for the law, if the law does not certify it, it will not come to pass. Deuteronomy 18 and 22 states that if what a prophet proclaims in the name of the Lord does not take place, the message was not sent from the Lord. The lesson for all of us is to give, not to give validity to non-factual degrees. People like to give authority to what they say. And they attach words, thus says the Lord. Wow. But be aware for just, there are some false prophets in yesterday and Jeremiah's day. There are some false prophets today wow. who will feed you what tickles your ears but makes you feel happy about it. But everything is not going to be happy in this journey. For well, we are cautioned and told by 
out the Apostle Paul, put on the whole armor. You don't go with armor for peace treaty. You go with armor to fight in the battle. But the true message from God is not given for profit, but for edification, or for instruction, for revelation, for conviction, for reproof and rebuke. And God is not in the business of giving false hope. God is in the true business and pronouncing that everything he does is true. Yes, sir. In other words, what God declares, it is so. Be it blessing or curse. As it is written in Isaiah 55 and 11, and I pray and pray, the word that goes out of my mouth shall not return to me empty but will accomplish what God desired and achieve for the purpose which God has sent The truth is a matter that sometimes let's go through things because of our own personal sin. But God is still merciful. Sometimes we go through some things because of what we have done. Nobody else may not know it, but God knows. But even at that, God is merciful. Yes, he does not give you what you deserve. But what he does give you is that he may bring you back into a right relationship and fellowship with him. God gives us a promise for better days ahead. And embodies his promise with the plan for his people. God's plan is not to punish us. God's plan is not to cause us suffering and pain. But sometimes we are punished and sometimes we go through only because we refuse to obey God's word. And to obey Him. Hear what 2 Peter 3 and 9 said. God is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come into repentance. I believe God will do whatever it takes to get us to repent. Because he don't want, it's not his desire that any should perish. In other words, God brings and allows devastation in the lives of his people for a specific purpose of moving us in the direction away from sin away from sin and sin's confession to sin abandonment. Yeah. We need to be able to, to walk away from sin. Oh, Where God wants us to be as his people is not only in relationship with him, but in full fellowship with him. For yeah. well, in his full fellowship, where we receive a great blessing. Yeah. Look at someone and say, God wants to bless you. God wants to have, have, wants you to have no fellowship with sin. Because God cannot bless in the midst of sin. God hates sin. And he don't want you to be in it, so he's going to do whatever he can to try to pull you out of sin. In the realm of iniquity and transgressions, instead of being blessed, sometimes we end up being cursed. Well, Instead, they have to repeated effort warn us to come out from among them and be separated. Yes, sir. That's right. This is where we find the Israelites in our text. That sin had placed them. The Bible is true. The wages of sin is death. Yes, sir. The wages of sin is death. And with death denoting separation. Because sin separates the people from prosperity and peace of Jerusalem. Well, no matter the message in contradiction from the false prophets of Jeremiah, day, the separation would not be, would be, not be but two years, but 70. Well. Can you see, you would hug everybody if you were in the midst of a pandemic. And this kind of fits. We don't know how long this thing gonna last. Yeah. 
And nobody that I've heard, they come across the TV, the airwaves, and say, God told me it's going to last two years. And they, <laughs> all the, the TV preachers and evangelists, those that have all the equipment to analyze the data, have not come up for it and say, this pandemic will be over next week. Because nobody knows but God. God is in control. It is, it may be, uh, tomorrow, if he so speaks, but the way our society had it, it can be no less than 14 days to come together. That's Keep right. Good for 14 yeah, days, maybe. Right. For them, but it can be instantaneous with God. And it makes the matter clear. The letter that's written says, the prophet Jeremiah, to the Judean exiles, tell them to expect 70 years Ooh, of captivity. Yes, Not two, but 70. Yes, Amen. That's a lifetime. Because yes. God promised three score and 10. Yes. Amen. So he said you're going to have at least one full generation. Yes. As a matter of fact, since God called the exiles to be carried away to Babylon and the judgment of their repeated sin. Jeremiah tells the refuge, refugees that you might as well put down roots in Babylon. Yeah. In other words, he tells them you might as well settle in. Mm. He tells them to build houses. Yeah. He tells them to plant your garden and eat the fruit mm -hmm. that you harvest from these gardens. Well. He tells them to marry and have children and marry their children to husband and wife because you're not going anywhere anytime soon. And uh, it, it would be at least a, a couple generations before the time to return. So they might as well make the best of the situation. We don't know what's going to happen in this pandemic, but we do know one thing, that God is still on the throne. And he still wants us to tell the story. That he still wants us to reach out to the lost and hurting. To let them know that Jesus lives. And he lives within our soul. You may be able to lock us down, but you can't lock us up. Amen. If, the, if, if Babylon had no peace, they would have no peace. Babylon will be their home for the next 70 years. And no amount of false prophecy will be able to change it. Unlike the words of the false prophet, there will be no last minute miracles or sudden solutions for their prediction. The most that would happen would be for them to settle in, to make the best of their current situation, rejoice in the Lord, Pray for the peace of Babylon and keep on keeping on. Yes, sir. I might get ran out of shadow, but it, we're in a bad situation. But it's partially because of the household of faith. Well. Yeah, it is. Because God said, if my people who are called by my name, yes, sir. he didn't say black people, white people, he said my people. He didn't say Baptist, or Methodist, Protestant, or, or, or Jew. He said, my people. We did not pray. When this pandemic first started, everybody was going to have a prayer meeting. Everybody wanted to call people together in parking lots, on the street. They wanted us to come together and pray. Now, nobody even wanted to go to prayer meeting. And you're going to have to leave home. Let me leave home. somebody to know that you might as well settle in because you've been disobedient. Even though we may not like it and we know that we got a dummy, an ignorant fool, and anything else you want to call it the president, God wants us to pray for him. Amen? He is the way he is because nobody wants to 
pray for him. No, I'm not a Republican. Amen. Amen. And I did not vote for him. Amen. But he is my president. Amen. 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 As bad as I hate to admit it. So all I can do is pray for him. That God can grab him by the reins of his mouth. I don't pray for his destruction. I pray for his sanity. Because he's insane right now. And he needs to be healed. My people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. And this is the point we want to drop off. And it said, turn from our wicked way. Turn from our wicked way. I don't see how I can call myself a Christian and see someone destroy my brothers and sisters and say, they are God. God has said, I have a plan for you. God has had a plan for every situation that arose in the world. He had a plan to get the slaves out of Egypt. He had a plan to help them cross over into the promised land. He had a plan when the world became wicked for recovery, and it took a flood to do it, but God had a plan. God had a plan for your salvation. God had a way that seemed the way that he was going to go, and he had his plan. And when he made his plan, he prayed his plan. When he prayed his plan, he participated in his plan. And when it got time for him to fulfill the plan and make sure the plan was complete, even though his disciples go and walk with him and talk with him, say, you need to turn around and go back. Don't you know they want to kill you? He said, get the hit safe. For this cause came out into the world. He went down. Yes, yes. Oh, 
shining. Yes. That men may see your good work. Yes. And glorify the Father which is in heaven. Yes. God is able. Yes. God is able to change the situation. Yes. God, and I, and I hear the governor say, well, I just don't know. And he's telling the truth. He don't know. But we serve a God that knows all. We serve a God that can do anything with faith. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love and righteousness on Christ.
God so much for this day. We thank you, God, so much for your love and kindness towards us. Thank you, God, for blessing Pastor Banks with such a right now word to encourage us that you have a plan for us. Even when it seems dark and bleak, and even when we don't understand when this is going to be over, when we can go back to whatever normal will look like, we know you have a plan. And so, Lord, help us to continue to lift our hands. Help us to continue in prayer. I pray, Father, that even in the darkness that our faith is strengthened. I pray, Father, that the plans of the enemy be defeated. Whatever evil that is trying to come within our spirits to have us to throw in the towel, that we will lean and depend on you, Father. For your word and the elders has told us to look to the hills from which cometh our help, and all of our help will come from the Lord. So, Father, bless everyone who has watched this sermon. Bless everyone that was here today. And, Father, until we can come together again, Father, I pray, Father, that we just continue to bless your holy name. So, Father, be with us and watch over us as we make our way back to our homes. Be with us and watch, and watch over us as we continue our day. For, Lord, we know that you are God and God alone. So, Lord, bless us and keep us is our prayer. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen.